for your word. Father God, we thank you for your word that does not come to you void, but accomplishes its purpose. Father God, you are the master builder. So tonight we come to you in brokenness to ask you to build your church because you know our vulnerability. So Father God, build our church and let your word go around the whole world to bring souls into your kingdom. Oh, so that at the end of everything, we will have cause to glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, the title of our message is The True Church. The True Church. And we, we, we will look at it from Matthew 16, verse 18. Matthew 16, verse 18. The church of our text is not a physical building. It is not, it is not a temple made with hands or wood or brick or stone or marble. It is a company of men and women, true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who makes far less show in the eyes of men, but is far more important in the eyes of God. The church consists of those who have repented of sin and fled to Christ by faith and faith alone and be made new creatures in him. It comprises of all God's elect, all who have received God's grace, all who've been washed in Christ's blood, or who has been clothed in Christ's righteousness, or who've been born again and sanctified by Christ's spirit. All of this of every nation and people and tongue composed of the test of the church of our text. This is the body of Christ. This is the flock of Christ. This is the bride of Christ. This is the lamb's wife. This is the church on the rock. The members of this church may not worship God in the same way or use the same form of government, but they all worship with the hearts. They, they are all led by one spirit, the Holy Spirit. They are all really and truly holy. They can all say hallelujah, and then they can all reply, amen. This is that church to which all the visible church on earth are all servants. Whether they are Episcopalian, independent, or Presbyterian, they all serve the interests of the one true church. They are the scaffolding behind which the great building is carried on. They are all the husks under which the living kernel grows. They have their various degrees of usefulness. The best and the worthiest of them is that who train new members for Christ, for Christ's true church. However, no visible church has any right to say we are the one, we are the one true church. We are men and wisdom will die with us. No visible church should ever dare say we stand forever and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. This is so because in all creative things, there is a tendency to decay. Our Lord Jesus Christ speaks of something that shall never perish or pass away. That one thing is the house built on solid foundation. 
the rock, the church of Jesus Christ. He declared in the word you've heard tonight. On this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Beloved, there are five things that demand your attention tonight. A building, that's the church declared by Jesus Christ. And the builder is Christ. The foundation is on this rock. As Christ declares that on this rock, I will build my church. And the peril implied in all this is the gate of hell. And the security attested is the gates of hell will not overcome it. Thank you, Jesus. And we can read more about this in Matthew 16, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 20. We can read about what we've just discussed. And to which he says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. This is the only church which possesses true unity. Its members are entirely agreed on all the weightier matters of religion, for they are all taught by one spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, and sin and their own hearts and faith and repentance and judgment to come. About all these points, they are of one mind. Take three or four of them strangers to one or uh, to one another from the remotest corners of the earth. Examine them separately on these points, and you will find them all of one judgment. Nothing can destroy the church that Jesus Christ has built. Eight members are a little flock and few in number compared with the children of the world. One or two here and there. But these are they who shake the universe. universe. These are they who change the fortunes of kingdoms by their prayers. These are they who are the active workers for spreading the knowledge of pure religion and undefiled. These are they who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And they all belong to one nation. This is the church which are truly glorious in the end. When all, when all pass away, then sh shall this church be presented with that spot before God, Father's throne. Thrones, principalities and powers upon earth shall come to nothing. But the church of the firstborn shall shine as the stars at the last and be presented with joy before the Father's throne. In the day of Jesus, in the day of Jesus Christ appearing, when the Lord's jewels are made up and the manifestation of the sons of God takes place, one church only will be named, and that is the church of the elect. Beloved, this is the true church to which a man must belong if he would be saved. Till you belong to this, you are nothing but a lost soul. You may have countless outward privileges. You may enjoy great lights, and knowledge. But if you do not belong to the body of Christ, your light, your knowledge and privileges 
will save, will not save your soul. The Lord Jesus Christ declares, I will build my church, the true church of Christ. The true church of Christ is cared for by all the three persons of the blessed Trinity. Christ as the blessed Trinity. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your word, for your powerful word which you have brought to uh, your us tonight. Father God, may you help us to keep this word in our hearts and tell it to others who do not know you so that they can also run to you to save their souls because this is the end time. Lord, we need you than ever before. We need you, please. So let the Holy Spirit lead us. Let the Holy Spirit take us this carnality from us and teach us. Let the Holy Spirit lead us in everything that we do so that we can also spread your word and let others come and know you to be saved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.